Hi everyone. This will be a quick video on how to read terms and relationships in ultrasound. There are a bunch of terms and relationships that you have to remember when studying for your SPI. A bunch. So many that it becomes really, really tiring, confusing, and eventually you just start mixing things mixing this term for that term. This one sounds like this one. This one term has three different variations to it. So it gets very, very confusing. The good news is there are ways around it. Some terms are nice enough to tell you what they mean just by the word the term is made up of. We have examples of this in everyday life honestly. And fortunately, we can apply this to ultrasound. So hopefully, when you start recognizing these terms, you no longer have to memorize them. That can save you some brain power. It can allow you to focus on the terms that are a little bit tricky, the ones that you actually do have to memorize, and then leave the rest to just the term itself, so that when you see it, you can read it, and by reading it, you get the definition from it. You ext extract the definition from it. I will also discuss relationships. Specifically, what? What kind of relationships? Well, math relationships. And I know math is a sore subject for some of us. You know, don't get me wrong. The SPI doesn't really have math in it, but the book does. The book has a bunch of math equations, math formulas. Even though you don't have to do math for the SPI, it does benefit you to know the formulas. But it doesn't benefit you for the reason that you think, which is math. So stop worrying about doing math. It actually benefits you because the formula is a shortcut. Well, a shortcut to what? A shortcut to relationships. If you know the formula, you know the relationship. Maybe it hasn't been taught to you. Maybe you were not aware of it. But hopefully by the end of this video, you will be able to see a math formula. And from that, know exactly what the relationships are. So one simple formula can summarize an entire page of text, honestly. So let's get started. So some words you do not need to memorize. We have plenty of examples in our everyday life. Maybe we notice them, maybe we don't. It's time to start noticing them because for the SPI, it will save you a lot of, lot of trouble. So let's run by a few to get our brains going. Football in terms of soccer. Look at the word, football. It's a ball you're gonna kick with your foot. Or it's a ball that will be handled by your foot or whatever relationship it has to your foot. <laughs> air freshener. It's meant to freshen your air. That's it, simple. Muscle spasm. For a muscle spasm, well, you do have to know what spasm is, but the definition of spasm is some sort of involuntary movement, a jittery. So muscle spasm is this jittery movement in your muscle. Keyboard. It's literally a board with keys on it. And then you'll strike a key to make a letter. So these are just examples where the word itself tells you what it is, what it is or what it does. And in ultrasound, there are plenty of those. So let's take a look. Here's a list. And in this list, all of these words tell you what they mean. They don't necessarily tell you the relationship with other words, but they tell you what it means. Pose duration. Look at the word, pose, duration. 
What's duration? How long something lasts? That's duration. How long does something last? So what what unit do we use for that? How long does something last? It's time. We use time. And the word says, pulse. Okay, so it's the duration of the pulse? Yeah, it's the duration of the pulse. Now, what you do need to know is that the pulse is the actual on time, not the off time. The pulse is only the, 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 the moment where there is talking, is what they call it in, in ultrasound. So the moment where you see the cycles, that's the pulse. So what is the duration of the pulse? That is your pulse duration. So it's your on-time duration measured in units of time. Spatial pulse length. So spatial pulse length, let's again break down the word, spatial pulse length. Well, length is a unit of distance, the length of something. How long is it? So we know we're going to be using units of distance. And how long is what? The pulse. How long is the pulse? And what do we say pulse was? You're on time. Spatial. The definition of spatial means that it occupies space. It occupies a location. So I wouldn't worry too much about jumping into spatial. But a pulse, the cycles, do occupy a space, a physical space. But this word, I would just say pulse length. Honestly, it's the length of the pulse. And if you notice, they are both measured in the exact same location, your pulse duration and your spatial pulse length. Because they're both measured in the exact same location, they share a direct relationship. If one goes up, the other one goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down. So they both measure your on time. They simply use it, use a different unit. One uses time, duration. The other uses length, which is distance. Post repetition period. Let's break the word, let's break down the word. Post repetition period. We know period is time, a period in time. So period stands for time. Pulse repetition. So what are we measuring in time? We're measuring how long does it take for my pulse to repeat repetition, to repeat itself. Pulse repetition period. That's it. How long, which is period, does it take for my pulse to repeat itself? For this, though, you have to measure your on and off time. Why? Because the pulse repeats itself after the off time. So if you want to know when is it that it loops back, it loops back after the off time. So you have to measure the on and off time. So you could say, that post repetition period is your post duration plus your off time. And post repetition frequency? Well, frequency is how many, how many per second, but how many is the real question. How many what? How many times does your post repeat itself? Post repetition. How many times does your pulse repeat itself? For frequency, we always refer to one second. So how many times does your pulse repeat itself per second? We're no longer concerned about off time over here for pulse repetition frequency because we're only counting the pulse repeating itself, just the pulse itself. So we're only going to count the pulse duration, essentially. So every time you see the pulse, that is what you're going to start counting for one whole second. 
and that will give you your post repetition frequency. So the same applies to all of these reflection, transmission, impedance, continuous wave. These words have definitions and those definitions tell you what the word is. And that happens to be the same for ultrasound. Reflection. A reflection is something that comes back to you. When you stare at a mirror, your image is being reflected back to you. In ultrasound, reflection are the waves that come back to us. They're the boomerangs. And reflection is the reason why we see an image. If there were no reflection, we wouldn't see an image. If the mirror did not reflect, we wouldn't see our image. Pulse wave Doppler. It's a wave sent out in pulses. When you feel the pulse in, your, in an artery, you feel it as a pulse. Boom, boom, boom. That's pulse wave Doppler. Instead of continuous wave, look at the word, continuous. It's no longer a pulse. It's now continuous. It just goes on and on and on. There is no break. There is no boom, boom. Where there is a break in between, there is no break for continuous wave. Shadow, line density, this applies for all of these terms. So hopefully that was very helpful. Now, let's get into the math. Do fractions also give you hints on relationships? Yes. Yes, they do. Let's look at the first one, wavelength. Wavelength equals propagation speed divided by frequency. This is how you read fractions in ultrasound. Maybe it applies in somewhere else, but I just know about ultrasound. Whatever's on the same, same level is directly related to whatever is on the other side of the equal sign. Whatever is at the bottom is inversely related to whatever is on the other side of the equal sign. The fraction itself does not have this direct or inverse relationship in terms of ultrasound, okay? So what does this mean? Well, if I erase the F, the frequency from this fraction, it would read wavelength equals propagation speed. When something equals each other, they're supposed to be directly related. Okay? So wavelength and propagation speed will be directly related. Remember, we only compare things on the other side of the equal sign. What do we know about frequency and wavelength? Well, we know that if my frequency goes up, my wavelength goes down. They have an inverse relationship. Look at the formula. Frequency is at the bottom. If it's at the bottom, it's going to have an inverse relationship with whatever is on the other side of the equal sign. In this case, wavelength. So frequency has an inverse relationship with wavelength. We already knew that. Now this formula proves it. Axial resolution. SPL divided by 2. If I erase the 2, it would just say axial resolution equals SPL direct relationship. It means that if my SPL goes up, my axial resolution number goes up. Because at the end of the day, this is a number. It's, an, it's a fraction, so it's going to give you a, a value. If my SPL goes down, my axial resolution will go down. Direct relationship. Doppler shift. Everything on top is directly related to Doppler shift. Individually though, right? So velocity, directly related to Doppler shift. Frequency, directly related to Doppler shift. Cosine of the angle, not just the angle, it's the cosine of the angle. That value that you get is directly related to Doppler shift. What about propagation speed? 
is at the bottom. So it's inversely related to Doppler shift. And feel free to do the rest. Apply this rule to the rest. And once you do that, anytime you see a formula, you should be able to understand the relationship. And hopefully, hopefully that will save you some trouble. And you can really understand this and enjoy it like I do. Thanks for watching.